Hi everybody. I hope you haven't given up on me. I'm sorry to be late. Um, <laughs> time got away from me and my desk was a huge mess, which when I show it to you in a minute, you're going to say, huh, it's still a huge mess. Um, but anyway, it is. You are correct. It is a huge mess. And while I'm waiting for a couple of y'all to find me, I've gone ahead and shared my shared the this over on my group. Why is my clothes all crooked? Well, it still looks crooked to me. Anyway, um, I have ink all over my fingers, so I have some wipes up here that I'm gonna um, use to hopefully keep the white cardstock white and not turn it melon mambo or purple, whatever it is I have on my fingers. But um, it's a great feeling to be inky, and I've had a lot of fun today playing with the pigment sprinkles. I showed you all this card earlier today that I made, and I think a couple of people wanted me to repeat this, so I'm, I'm going to do that. And then I also made this card today, and I thought we would repeat, if not the same card, something similar to it. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It's not the flowers that have presented the challenge for me. It's actually creating this background. Um, maybe because I keep creating them and then using them for something else. I I'm not sure. But, um, and I think I used the sprinkles a couple of different ways today. So, um, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm anxious to show you what I've got going on. So, um, we are working with the pigment sprinkles. Hey, Elizabeth, they are on page. I thought I had this all in reach. Um, so the pigment sprinkles are on page 179 of your catalog. And they are six, okay, six different colors. Hey, Joyce, for $23. I think that's a great, a great deal. We carried brush crystals in the past. And I think that there were five, oh my gosh, is that pink on my chin? Oh, great. Well, <laughs> keep it real. I'm wearing you know, makeup on my hmm, face that's not makeup. Um, anyway, I think the brush crystals were 30 for four or five different colors, and the, the, those colors didn't match our Stampin' Up! colors. I loved them. I actually, I, I truly, truly loved them, um, and I think that's one of the reasons I couldn't wait to get my hands on the ones that actually matched our colors, and I'm, I'm just, I'm having a lot of fun. So, um, I can't show you everything that I've done. One of the things is actually something that is, um, is a surprise for the retreat next weekend, and so I can't, I can't show that, because obviously that has to remain a surprise. And um, you've seen a couple of the cards that I've actually made and given away. And we're going to repeat one of those um, today. Um, I actually have, have some important young people in my life that have birthdays this month. And you'll be proud of me. I have actually got at least a dozen cards addressed to go out in the mail tomorrow. And Joyce, I will also send your... Um, your C3 project kit in the mail tomorrow. So um, I'm looking around thinking I have misplaced something. Um, okay, so I think we've got a couple of people on. I can't believe I've got this ink all over my face, but I do. So, all right, let me let me see where to start. Um, Okay, I've got this. I've got, I've got I've got this card on top. So I'm going to attempt to switch screens and repeat this one, or more or less repeat it. And that way, you don't have to look at this, you know, stuff on my face any longer either. All right, so not quite straight. That looks a little bit better. I need to get that out of my way. Okay, so I'm going to put this right here. That's our model. And um, this is a just cardboard chipboard that comes with paper pumpkin. And um, sometimes it comes with designer series paper. I just hang on to it for projects like this where I am 
um, creating something wet that <laughs> then has to dry. So um, I'm just going to scoop this up a little bit more so that I can get my workspace in the camera or in the in the screen also. All right, I think I've managed to do that. And I've got still got some post-it notes over here, right? So um, the host code. I very much appreciate your business and your support. And if you don't have a demonstrator and would like to order products that I use today, I would, um, I would appreciate it if you would visit my website and use this host code for your order. And I also want to remind you that if your wish list totals $100, then you really need to take advantage of this extra, extra value. Um, in July or August, you may purchase the best deal in the catalog, which we call the Starter Kit, for $99 plus tax and select $155 in merchandise. And I think we, we get tripped up there that people ask me frequently, well, what do I get? And the thing is, you get whatever you choose. Uh, you may get you may choose to get Stampin' Blends. You may choose to get um, a suite of products or a suite plus more products. Um, but $155 is, is quite the bargain. Plus, the next month in August, if you sign up in July, you would get 10 extra, $10, a $10 coupon to use in August. If you joined in August for this purpose, then you would get $10 in September. So, okay. Let me show you what I have, um, how I started this project. All right, I've done this with a few different colors. So, um, a lot of times, and then this is shimmer white cardstock, okay? So, um, sometimes I use watercolor paper and sometimes I use shimmer white. Today I am working with shimmer white, and I know you can't see the shimmer, but it really does have quite a bit of shimmer to it. Um, not as much as Stella, but a fair bit. So I used the Melon Mambo crystals on the first one. And then I've got a gorgeous grape over here to my left that you can't quite see. So I think that um, what would be, what should we do next? Maybe the Bermuda Bay. So for this project, I actually started with a dry piece of shimmer white and I just and guys a lot a little of this goes a, a long long way and just to give you a point of reference <laughs> this was the first one I, I tried <laughs> so uh, it goes a long long way so I'm just doing a tiny bit of the Bermuda Bay and then I am going to, actually, you could do this a couple of ways. You could just drop water on it from an aqua painter, or you could um, spray. And I do not have a Stampin' Spritzer up here with me, so I am using what I actually use to hold bug spray. But it just has water in it. It does not have bug spray. But I make my own bug spray, and this is, I use these bottles. Okay, so I'm just adding water to get this to activate the crystals. Isn't that gorgeous? This is so fun. Right, now I'm just going to pick it up and move it around a little bit because to I want my cutout area to all be have color on it. So I need a, but I don't necessarily want it to cover the entire sheet. So it's okay if it runs, it gives me little rivulets off. Look at me using a big word on a Sunday. So I'm kind of sad. This is our holiday weekend drawing to a close here. Although I did work Friday. And no, for those of you interested, my new computer and I are not especially getting along just yet. But we'll have that figured out soon. 
I'm pretty much a Mac person and my new computer is of course Windows and not only Windows but Windows 10 which I'm not familiar with. Okay, so I'm going to set that down and let it dry. Now I could get the heat gun out after it and that gives it an entirely different look. Not a bad look, just a different look. Um, it tends I'm just trying to think if I've got one over here that will demonstrate that real well. I really don't because I, for the most part I have let these dry on their own today. And I apologize, I'm looking down, I'm not looking to see if you guys are commenting or not. But when you don't use a heat gun, it takes a little bit of time to dry. And, and it will settle in and be a little darker in this spot, just like it looks. Um, you can move it around just a little bit like this with the paper piercing tool. Every time, it's going to be a little different. All right, I'm actually going to move this one aside. And I'll just set the whole thing aside so I can show you that, just like magic, I have one that I've already made. And I've already done the cutout in the center. Now, and I'm going to take a step that I might not have to take, but it's easy enough to do and it worked well for this one, so I'm going to do it again. Um, this is actually cut out of the center because I wanted it to line up correctly and it would it would not if these were two separate pieces it wouldn't line up so I guess you could I, I don't I don't know this was the way that it looked like I should do it so that's the reason I did it this way so I've, I've cut this out right this is the gorgeous grape and I am going to put this piece of gorgeous grape behind it. And like I said, I don't know that this step is really necessary, but because I'm going to put that label up on dimensionals, I did it. And that way, if anything does show up, it's that your eye would be a little fooled. And the other thing this might do is help flatten out that piece of shimmer white. As this um, dries, it does tend to um, warp is not the proper word, but that's the word I have in my head. Okay, so then I'm going to mount this to a piece of black cardstock that is just um, an eighth of an inch wider. And I am getting better at doing my directions, so I will post photos of the, my cards and the dimensions and instructions for you all. I have finally figured out how to use some of the software on the iPad that makes that much, much easier. And I always appreciate it when I see a sample and have the directions to go along with it and don't have to feel my way around in the dark. Okay, so now that part is complete. Now, on the first one, I took some silver twine and kind of made a messy nest here as well. Let me shut that back up. And I need some dots. And it's probably cheating to create a mess from neatness, but let me grab an end. But really, I just want just want this to kind of be messy. I want it to be a controlled mess. I'm having difficulty controlling it. Alright, you can go over there. Right. 
two over here. Most of the time when I do these messy looks, I just wrap it around my finger. But since I had this big open hole, I decided why not use it. And it shows you another way to, to create these little bird's nest looking things. Okay, so that's probably enough. Okay. So that is that part. Now we need to do this center part with the blessed to know you. And I don't know if I can see if I can zoom in. Yes, but I need to move everything a little bit. I hope that's focused for y'all. Okay, so for this, I stamped Blessed from um, to a Wild Rose stamp set in, um, in Versamark ink. And then I used the new um, Shimmer Black um, embossing powder and embossed the word Blessed. Um, if you were just stamping this in black ink on this, you might want to use your Stamparatus so that you can come back to it multiple times and um, continue to intensify the black. Let's see if I've got my stamp set handy. A very carefully constructed pile over here. All right, here is I really wasn't sure about using the embossing buddy on this. You know, I don't like to use it on black. So I'm actually not, I'm, but I'm going to keep my little paintbrush handy um, in case I need to brush away any embossing powder. Okay. So Versamark ink is special ink. It takes a long time to dry. So it gives you lots of time to, to work with it. And it um, it's clear. And I'm stamping this kind of up near the top because I want that little label that says to know you to be below it, but still within the label. And so I can kind of turn it and see that the image is there. And here is my shimmer white. I'm just going to open this up so that I can collect any excess that falls off. Okay, so wow, you can also see, I mean, I've got a great, oh, you can't see, sorry. Um, so that embossing powder did a good job getting the blessed, but I've also got a good bit of it where I don't want it. And if I were to just hit this with the heat gun without brushing it off, then... We have some extra. Oh shoot. My last part of my D there. And I do have hmm. I do have a Versamark marker that I could fill that back in with. But I don't know. Well, that worked pretty well. Okay. So all I did was just re, just add, just re-dipped it in the embossing powder, which meant that the parts that stuck before stuck again. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Now, in case there's any in here, this is why I keep scratch paper handy. 
just shake that back in. Set that to the side. And, well, that was unfortunate. Okay, I'm actually going to hold this with my left hand. Bring my heat gun in. I don't know that you'll be able to see the change as it starts to melt. Oh, yeah. I think you can, yeah. So it's kind of hard to describe what you're looking for there, but I think you were able to see it as it changed. And actually we're gonna do another, no, no, no. So we're gonna do the same thing, but with white embossing powder on black. So I've got just a little half an inch strip of black here black cardstock. Once again, I'm moving off. Oh, but that is not Versamark ink. That is actually Memento Black, which is not going to show up on this black cardstock. So I'm going to clean that off. As long as I've got this open, I'm going to clean off the blessed. And the Versamark is here. And since this is a photopolymer stamp, I want a little more cushion, so I have pulled in my silicone mat. And that is not straight, but that's okay, because I'm actually going to trim this up afterwards. I want it to be as narrow as possible. So I'm going to hold it this way. This white I use quite often, so I keep it in this handy little container. Very important to make sure I remember to snap that on. That looks completely melting, if you will. And I told you I was going to trim it up. I'm actually going to trim it this way as well. Right, so I'll just go right like that. Okay, so basically we're able to put that we're ready to put this together. I went ahead and used the framelits that match this to a wild rose, um, and I cut out the the flower, the rose, and the leaves in black to go with it, and so. I'm just going to place them like so. Just use a little bit of glue on the end. All right, and on some dimensionals. And I am actually picking up quite a few because this is not, not flat. I want to be sure I hold it 
in place. So have you seen some of the photos that my fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrators are posting they got on board the cruise ship today? And they'll get to preview the holiday catalog this week and they'll learn where the incentive trip will be in the year 2021. So we're just wrapping up the Stampin' Up! year in the earnings period for the trip for next summer, which is a trip to Maui. I'm not going to earn that trip. I'm not on track for it. I'm hoping that I can earn the trip for 2021. I'm just deciding how I want to place that. And it's really interesting that this little part wants to fall off. It wants to really not be lifted very much at all. What's up with that? And I'm just going to put a little adhesive just on that one little piece of the flower because I want it, for the most part, to just be off the label but not flat to the card. So I'm going to let that set for just a second, and I'll go ahead and put the less to know you in place. Again, the only dimensionals I've used are on the label itself. And then I'm going to add on the melon mambo card I used just regular rhinestones and I think for this one I am going to use the peacock rhinestones with some lovely purple oh. All right. might need to do a little cleanup with that glue I've got an odd number here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, got five. Now I need to put this down on the card base. So, what do you think? You like the gorgeous grape or the melon mambo or Bermuda Bay is still over there drying? and stuff has fallen on top of it. That was not well done, Michelle. What do you think? So there are those two. And let's see what else I have next. Let me look at the Bermuda Bay, see how it's coming over here. No, it's very wet. Okay. No, the Bermuda, Bermuda Bay is very wet, so I'll have to finish it up off camera and show you. All right, let's see what we have next. So this one... So I had in mind something along the lines of this. Um, the way I did this was I created a, a background sheet using Mango Melody, Bermuda Bay, and Melon Mambo. And then cut it in half, and then half becomes this background here, so this is um, Well, it depends on how big I cut this piece, right? 
um, and then stamped the wild rose on this and cut it out with the framelits. Um, and then the yellow orange ones are a sheet of Mango Melody and Daffodil Delight. And, um, and so that's where those two flowers came from. And and they're really they're really big, right? I do have some extra. Oh, the green is the Granny Apple Green. I have a sheet of that, and then I use the leaf punch to punch out some leaves. And I think it would be really fun to get a little bit more of the variation in the color. But I also, because I had that piece over here of Bermuda Bay that is so dark, that they might make some pretty leaves too. A little bit of variation trapped in my punch. Right, so it gives us a few different leaves. And then the other thing. All right, so let's set this here and let's cut this in half. So this is actually five and a half. So two and three quarters would be half of it. Well, that was not good. Okay, so then I've just got this white layer and then I'm thinking this. And then something decorated on it and some flowers. I don't have the new the new daisy punch, but I wonder how. Okay, hold that thought. So the new the new daisy punch is a little smaller than the original, but I think I can get two daisies out of this and layer them it's seriously hard to punch. Okay, what if this looked like this. And I like the real I really like the daisy. And I can't decide about the greens. What do you guys think? Light or dark? And then should it be so many decisions, huh? Okay. And I've, I've noticed some off-center placements recently or... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and layer these together because that part I know about, right? This was very unplanned. This is not the flower I thought I was going to work with. I thought we would do something like this um, with a different punch. 
which is quite lovely and I'm going to need to finish. But I just saw Daisy when I was looking at this. So, and I like this birthdays are the best days. So I think I'll go ahead and do stamp that. Um, and I think maybe the yellow center in the daisy. And then maybe it's just as simple as having some greenery poke out in a couple of places. Does it need a ribbon along the bottom maybe? Okay, let's see. Let me get this put away. So I already have the birthdays or the best days on the Stamparatus because I knew I wasn't going to emboss that. I was just going to stamp it in Memento. So I wanted to be able to stamp it a few different times if I needed to increase the intensity of it. I think that's the word I want to use. I'm also thinking I might need some ribbon here. And I'm wondering if that purple is too much or if I should use the white. Goodness, goodness. So many decisions. Okay. So here's the Stamparatus. And like I said, I've already got birthdays are the best days up here. And I marked my little corner where I would want to put I think I like that that way. A lot of times I don't use a magnet to hold down my cardstock, but I think because I'm using this, this wet <laughs> and dried, I am going to use it. All right, so I've got good and inked. Come over. And I'm going to go ahead and ink it up again so that if you don't know what I meant, you will. But I'm just going to, I'm just adding another layer of black. And I apologize, that is really shaking the camera. I've just gotten it really dark so that black really jumps out. If I really wanted it to jump out, I should have embossed it, right? The birthdays are the best days. That is from the beautiful friendship stamp set. In case you were wondering. And I'm a stamp. I do have one chamois that's cut into four pieces that I use for cleaning the stamp apparatus. Okay, so now let's see how we like this. Oh, yeah, see, I got a little pink on me. I'm gonna grab a white. I don't know if that's just residual from working with the sprinkles, if I've got sprinkles on my work surface, or if it's coming off of the paper itself, but. You can see from my wipe, I am getting a little, a little bit off. Okay. So, I think pop this up. I think if I wanted. I see it in my head. So let's see if I see it. Let's see how it looks on paper. And y'all, can I just tell you how scary it is to say I see it in my head? I am not comfortable with designing cards, and it is 
way out of my comfort zone to do this on the fly with you. Um, I'm actually seeing, I'm going to get the white, the white polka dot trim, I think. And normally, yes, I do a cheater bow, and I'm not doing that this time because this ribbon is just really easy to work with. And I'm just going to tie a knot. And I'll trim that up in a few minutes. And again, lots of dimensionals because this is um, it's just kind of warped. I might have this zoomed in too far. So I saw someone posted, you know, you know, what do you think you want to see in the holiday catalog? And I was like, oh my gosh, I hadn't even thought about that. I'm still working my way through the new annual catalog and loving it so much. Can't imagine. Dude, we are making Christmas cards each month. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. Does it need to be up here? I'm okay with it not being. And now I did just kind of bend my leaves a little bit. And I think I'm going to go with the brighter ones. And I'm just tucking a little blue back there. Oh my gosh, that speaker was on the whole time. I hope that doesn't mean the sound was bad. Well, I can't read the comments without making the sound come on. All right, I need fuzzy dots, okay. So this was the one I made before we started, and then this one with the daisy. I, I like it. So I hope you guys do too. Alright, um, I have one other card to do, and you have seen this one before, at least the card. Um, so this is 
Oh, dead gum. This label is the same size as my card front, so it is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I am going to cut an inch off the bottom. That's for the inside of my card. I'm going to cut another inch off. And that's for the bottom of the front. That's a little difficult to say, bottom of the front. And then that leaves me this band here where I am going to stamp happy birthday. And I'm going to use a stamp set that, of course, is not over there. Um, I'm going to use gorgeous grape ink and the happy birthday from the perennial birthday stamp set. And the block. All right, and I will let's see. Make sure I get this. I feel your pain, Joyce. <laughs> Sometimes it's just not safe to watch what everybody else is doing. But I love the sprinkles. I do not think that you will regret this. You can use them um, to create actual paints and paint with them. Um, or you can do these abstract backgrounds. Um, it, there are just so many things that you can do. I I think you'll, I think you'd be very happy if you go ahead and purchase the sprinkles. All right. Now. Very nice. What can we have left in the room? The challenge here is deciding what color. Let me this way, right? Yeah. Um, I like to do a ribbon around this. There's so much going on with the tie dye effect, maybe. I think that I will just do this polka dot ribbon again. Sorry if I'm sticking my head in the way there. Oh, that's so pretty. Wow, I just love the intensity of that. So this is um, Gorgeous Grape and Melon Mambo and a little bit of um, Mango Melody. You can kind of see here coming in. Kind of looks like that really pretty sky that um, that we've had a little bit red sky at night really pink purple skies and then I just like this on the inside I'm trying to remember to stamp the inside of my cards to decorate the inside of my cards to decorate my envelopes and I am not in that. So, if you liked the video today, I would appreciate it if you would share it and help me grow my audience, grow my business. And I will post photos and instructions for these cards here on Facebook. I can even send it out in, the, in my email newsletter. I don't really maintain a blog, um, but I uh, do try to 
keep things on Instagram and um, Facebook. But I think those are the cards I had for you today. So I'm going to zoom back out so that I can put them back down here. So we have this one and this one. So that one that I did beforehand. And then we made this one. And this one that I did beforehand. If you have any questions about bonus days or the extra extra joining special, um, please um, ask me questions. I'd be happy to tell you about either of those specials and help you get, um, get the most for your investment in products as well. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I so appreciate you being here and I hope you've had a good holiday weekend. We have and um, I will see you again next Sunday. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.